Hello? We're having a stare down. Yeah, I think I... Checkmark it. dared me not to speak during the intro. I did. He reverse psychology me. I don't appreciate that shit. It's, it's because we know how to be manipulated, sir, by ourselves. Oh, poop. I, we used our I worst enemy. I hate being against. manipulated. We used our worst enemy. Oh, against us. man. How are you, sir? I'm just muy bien, too. Uh, welcome to uh, Sunday. Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. Sunday. Um, November the 29th of 2020. I don't know what's going on with the COVID. I've, 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 I've only had self lockdown. Oh, that's funny. Turn dude. off the internet, turn it all off, man. No social media, nothing. You turned off the interwebs? No, I would never do that because I'm, I need to be connected in some weird way. Okay. Welcome. Hola. Is it not conscious? I believe it is. This time? Yes. We're getting serious, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's the worst. Yeah, we're going to talk about some stuff. What's, uh, what's on the docket for the this docket, knock it conscious? Uh, f- broadcasting live from Checkmark. The Treehouse in Phoenix, Arizona. From the home office, and also in Phoenix, Arizona. But because your branch headquarters is The Gilbert. branch headquarters. You were, you were the- in G-Town in Gilbert, Gilbert. AZ. That's, that's your casa, sir. Yeah. How do we make this thing delay? Oh, so you it's change- two, right? Yeah, you do- Yep, yeah, see where it says two, reads two? Just yeah. change it to one or one and a half. Just push one of the other buttons. It's 0. 0.5, 1, 0. 0.5, 0. Yeah. 0.5, and one. You'd, no, not cut. You have to go back to auto. Oh. Auto and then the delay. Okay. Did it, oh, did it cut? Yay, me. Oh, yay. You got transitions. Check it out. I, I learned technical stuff. So we're, we're back on video. I know what? it's only like day 10 or so, but we're trying. <laughs> day 10. Well, it's only our second time with dual, dual, dual. cameras and like this new Dueling system. Dueling dust busters. Spending all this money on this thing. Yeah. But, um. Megzi thought the two seconds was too much. It's okay. okay. It doesn't matter. One and thinking, a half? I was thinking a one. Okay. And then we'll, we'll split the difference. One. And then if it's not enough, then we'll just go to one and a half, and then it has to be the has to be oh, right. All right, here we go. It's now on one. And for the audio well, people, we're, we're, we have a fade in, fade out of the two cameras. Yes, we're, tra- we're transitioning. And, and once transitioning. again, I am in control of crappy sound buttons, oh, and you're in control of the awesome I'd much rather have this. the sound buttons. I, I know. That's why you can't have them. That's not cool. We've had that conversation. How am I the immature one in this podcast? We've had, no, you're not the immature one. You're the overuser of one. It's totally... you. This is the thing. When I want to do something... I try not to use it. You want to use it, so it would be overused. I will let, look, I promise that you get to use the Stick of Fury to initiate story time when you see fit. Because okay. I know you have a story time with this one. <laughs> okay. <gasps> I'm so scared. <laughs> mom, 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 please go. <laughs> so, um, we have this uh, serious topic. Yeah, originally the the idea was brought to me from a friend, and the idea was why isn't natural and homeopathic medical care covered under your insurance? That's the original idea. So I googled that. And I in a general googled. sense, if I may, please, of course, homeopathic is in salves, bombs, not FDA type stuff, yeah. supplements, chiropractor, massage. Uh, homeo- homeopathic things, homeopathic yes. remedies. Yes. Okay. So that also includes herbs, teas, um, massage, acupuncture. What kind of teas? Like. What? What teas? Oh, a teas. A teas. No. Yes, that should also be covered. <laughs> that should be covered. Hell That's yes. part of mental health. That's part I, of my physical. and emotional and touching and spiritual and good lots touching. of touching. Lots of touching. Not no touching. All lots of, of the touching. So teas. Sorry. Uh, drinks. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so bombs. herbal teas. Anything that promotes crystals. Even yes. Anything that promotes well-being from any perspective. Why isn't that covered under the insurance your company offers you or Cobra, which is an Arizona. Or Obamacare or, you know, whatever insurance, uh, whether it's, you know. um, I think Cobra is everyone after you leave, but Access is the Arizona one. A-H-C-C-S-S-S-S-S-S-S-S. Sure. But I think Cobra kicks in like when you say you quit your job. Yeah. You can buy, you can continue your current thing and pay your half plus your. Yes. Your. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. uh, Company's half, I think, or something. Yes. And it's expensive as shit, but. 
uh, why aren't all of the non, so you can go to your doctor and you can get a CAT scan and you can get um, anti-seizure meds, but you can't get an acupuncturist or a, a psychiatrist. Those things aren't paid for. So why is that? That's the original idea. And especially one of the thoughts to that is the mental health is one of the largest things that we're starting to see, right? We've, yeah. we, how many times we talk about physical was PTSD or whatever it was, like, but now it's this mental condition. It's, it's these mental things become physical man, the physical manifestations from your mental issues. I mean, you break out in hives or you have anxiety, your elevated heartbeat. So your physical ailments or your physical results or effects could be directly resulting from from a mental state. Well, yes, I agree. And, and I mean, I would want to go back to what I said on the Catholic podcast where Tyson firmly, firmly believed that his cancer was directly affected to his abuse from Father Harris. So, and that that was his opinion of his experiences and his cancer. So that's, that obviously can't be proven, but he was incredibly traumatized and incredibly haunted individual. So I I have to give his theory credence. You and know? it was barely a physical act in his case because from the story that you shared, something happened, but it wasn't even a full-fledged, like, event. Yeah, he wasn't abused, like, over 10 years or something. Right, or like... It was a one-time thing. Right, yes. and it was... and it's. From what at least was shared, I don't know what happened in the court records, but it was like, it was like an attempt, and yes. there was touching, but yes. it wasn't it correct like a f it didn't whatever it wasn't an hour right or, yes I understand or what you're saying I, I, so, yes. I'm not not trivializing the no, event but I understand just what you're saying how strong the mental aspect of that right. just from that little from that l small experience how widely that affected him mentally yes I totally get you go football. Just putting it on, bro. Yeah, Mark's putting on the football game because he's a weirdo head. I'm a weirdo head. Uh, so th we started researching why isn't why aren't all those things covered? Whether it's your acupuncturist because or your um chiropractor, why isn't that covered? Like, hey, I have headaches because my neck's messed up or my lower back's messed up, so I go get cracked every two weeks, every month, whatever it is, and I feel so much better after, and it relieves tension and this and that and. People, they firmly, firmly believe in that. And that's amazing. And that's not covered under insurance. And even if you have the best insurance, it's still not covered. So there's these other programs that most companies have, HSAs and FSAs. And I don't really understand the difference between those two, but you have I to- speak to them. Sure, or I, we don't have to. They're we can, uh, we put, employees can put money into those things and then they use that money and it's tax deductible. They use that money and then they- pay for an acupuncturist or a chiropractor or their shrink right. or it's their... It's a pre-tax draw. Right. Right, so you don't get hit. Right. To your point. So um, they use that, but once That's again, they it's not... HSA. It's... You're still paying for that coverage. Right. So... You're actually paying for the ability to do that. Correct. <laughs> Which is kind of funny. You're actually paying to... Like, for example, I'm with Cigna. My company's okay. with Cigna. So you're paying to get Cigna rates. So you're paying a flat rate plus taking an extra amount of money and putting into this HSA account from which you use to pay for all your medical things or at least subsidize as much as possible. Yeah, you, yeah you subsidize it like crazy. Yeah, it's, it's so. really weird. But it, yeah, that's the system they're in now or they're at. So it's crazy. I, I, I'm just, I'm, yeah, and that's confusing to me. It, it, very confusing. Uh, the FSA is like a, what was called a flexible spending account. Yes, that's sir. more for like medical, like, a lot of times it was over the counter, like aspirin, band aid. Well, that's all your copays can come out of there, uh, right? The, the HSA, that's where the copays can come out. The flexible spending is like for other things, I think. It's really, it's confusing. Okay, it, now I'm more confused. Yeah. Well, the FSA, I think you can do it like as a one time thing. Like, say you want to get braces this year. So you can okay. you can put squirrel money away just in FSA to pay for that. But don't eat any squirrels. Yeah, but, well, sushi. Sushi, but no squirrels. Sushi, okay. But, well, squirrels, but no sushi, apparently. Or squirrel tacos, bro. Uh, okay. Um, and what we did, we did pull... You pulled from a specific article. Yes, sir. I just want to be clear, if you'd like to share what that is, and we'll put that up on, sure, the, note, of on course. the show notes, of course. Um, 
the article stated that uh, 1.5 trillion dollars every single year in the U.S. is spent on healthcare. Trillion with a T, and that's a lot of damn money. So, um, that's fifteen hundred billion. Oh, that's a lot of money. Or fifteen million million. Sure. Or so one, yeah, within that something like that trillions of dollars, patients pay thirty billion out of their own pockets for non traditional care. So outside of that one point five trillion, it's an additional thirty, 30 billion, billion that, like, I go it, when it, if I go see a therapist, if I go anything that's not under my insurance, that's out of that. That's out of my own pocket. Whether you have an, whether you have an HSA or whatever. Yeah. That's my money. That's not covered. Whether I go see an acupuncturist, whether you go see a, a chiropractor, or there's a million different things. Let's say you go see a homeopathic medical doctor. That person's... Of which there are many in Arizona, for sure. Scottsdale's oh, well, lit. I mean, there's a lot around the country, but yeah. like, specifically like Sedona. I mean, we, we right. live in a very energy-like right. homeo, outside, outdoors, weather, you know, yeah. beautiful weather kind yeah. of town, city. So we're especially affected by that with the kind of the where we live. Yeah. I, More I, than like Boise, Idaho. I don't see as many. Or, you know, like somebody in Kentucky or something. There wouldn't be like a homeopathic crystal store. I would say yeah. like... You know what? I'm not going to. Let's just move along. Um, you can say whatever you want. I would say like Texas wouldn't be a big place where okay. homeopathic medicine would be. Okay. But I would say like Boulder, Colorado would oh, probably yeah. well, Colorado would be sure. huge. I would say Berkeley, California, it would yeah. be huge. San Francisco. Yeah. I would. I would. I mean. Yeah, there's certain places that you'd look at at the the mentality or the philosophy of the people that live there. The culture, like Colorado, is a very open yeah, type thing, so right. it totally makes sense. I mean, they legalize psilocybin mushrooms, so you're. I mean, I would assume Port, Portland, Oregon, considering oh, yeah, they legalized all the, right. You know, Washington, Seattle, things like that. Yeah, I'd like to say the woke people, but in a well, that's not. I mean, they just want to. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily say woke, but I would say they they look at things from a different perspective. Like, hey, maybe I should try something that's natural versus something that's synthetic, and see what happens. You know. Yeah. So I feel like that it's tilted a little bit from just not going with the corporation to going anti-corporation almost though. It's a, almost just a little more of a stance against it, which is totally cool. I mean, everyone's allowed to feel yeah, the way they feel. Correct. But that's the mentality of the people, I would guess, in, in a way. Um, I would agree with you, yes. Um, the points about the study that um, I have noted is that uh, – there was a White House commission done in the early 2000s, um, and they. this is a quote from that. Insurance and managed care executives interviewed by the White House commission indicated that CAM, which is... Uh, uh, complementary. And thank you. Complementary and alternative medicine therapies are not covered because there is a lack of evidence supporting their medical effectiveness. The current climate of, quote, runaway care, rising health care costs, and the constant stream of new technologies and drugs has left the decision makers in the insurance equation cautious about expanding any health care benefits. They are concerned that the limited dollars be spent on care that has been shown to be safe and effective. That's a long quote. I probably should have broke that up, so I apologize. Uh, bro, bro. Did, this this was not our first rodeo. You should you should have done better. <laughs> <laughs> this is our fifty third like, rodeo. I'm so I sorry. I almost muted myself. I, I, I'm, no, I'm sorry. Just no, Poop. but it makes. But basically, could you summarize that or just kind of put that? Yeah, in a, I, I guess my po the yeah. So the way I see it is that the the White House Commission that that talked to pharmaceutical companies and insurance companies said they're not willing to look at homeopathic or natural medicine because of the fact that they're the rising costs and it's too much work for them and they're going to rely upon the fact of medicine that's already been FDA approved. Does that, do you, did I miss anything? I, I would like to add to Please. that or just expound if I of may. Of course. Um, th what I took from it is in the homeopathic world, you obviously 
we've both dipped our toes in it uh, with our spiritual things that have happened. Yeah. So we've looked at, you know, we know you have a good friend that makes crystal jewelry, for example. Yeah. And you have people who work with herbs and, and things like that. And yeah. I've, I come, you know, I kind of recently delved into that. There are shysters out there. Oh, of course. And I think what they're saying is it's hard to say that this, you know, say like a kyanite crystal heals, right? Or helps in the healing process. It could be totally psychosomatic. So it does work for that person, but it may not work for someone who is just given the crystal, for example, and they don't believe in the power of the healing, right? Right. So that's when they talk about the efficacy. Yes. And it's really hard to prove with all the shysters that are out there. And it's almost like a set, like we talk about this being a system, you know, the insurance company being a system. Yeah. The homeopathic people, there's like a system, you know, of the shysters, the shysterism, like the. Yeah. There are people trying to trick people. Correct. Of right. Course. I, you know, I saw your grandfather come through and he told me to tell you that you should buck up. You're having troubles. Oh my gosh, I am having troubles. You know, that kind of, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I think that's where it does become a very big gray area. Right. But for example, um, in psychology, some psychiatrists and or psychologists are covered. Did you see the thing about the 20,000 people and employees in your notes? No, I don't okay. recall that. So something that, that I took away from it was um, some, some of these treatments are covered, but it's usually large employers with more than 20,000 employees. Okay. More likely to offer access versus smaller employers. Yeah, because it's because of costs. Right, absolutely. Yeah, it's all about money. It's easier to spread it out over twenty thousand employees, of course, or plus versus whatever. I don't work in a company that has that many. Yeah, a hundred or a couple hundred at most. Yeah, so it's a different thing. But some psychology and psychiatry is covered, but NLP is not, which is neuro linguistic programming. Yeah, and we've talked about that. We've talked about Doctor Smarty Pants. Yeah, and um, I went to saw him, see him. You saw him. He, I'm not gonna lie, he saved my life. It's not, a, that is not a joke. Like he, right. Yes. I sought the help and I, I wanted the help. Right. Ultimately. But he found the language that worked for me or whatever. He, you know? he f just, he figured out how to communicate with you. Right. He figured out how to help me. Right. Where no psychiatrist nor psychologist would stand a snowball's chance in hell of getting even close to me. Cause to your point, what are you, when you walk in the smartest person in the room, boom. And it's unfortunate in a lot of cases. Um, but that's one example where it's hard. Now, NLP, they can't really, there's either not enough science behind it or that studied it, its effectiveness. Yeah. Where psychology seems to have a little bit more of a mainstream, right? But it's also been ingrained, which is another part of the system. Yes. So anyway, um, please continue uh, with your point about the quote and what that meant. What that means to you. Uh, that's it. That's all I got on the quote. Okay. What What do you have next? Uh, the next part is a, another quote that's not as long, but just as poopy. A 2006 uh, survey stated that insurance payers have resisted covering alternative medicine providers in part because of a fear that coverage would result in large, steadily increasing and unpredictable expenditures. Not unlike the history of prescription drugs. The study performed six years after the mandated inclusion of those of alternative medicine benefits in Washington state suggests that's not going to be the case. Washington state changed the way they did things. And they were kind of like a test environment and they allowed um, alternative medicine to be covered under existing insurance, mainstream existing insurance companies. So they were a test to basically and it showed that multiple studies showed that costs actually went down. That's the point of the study. So insurance providers were said, no, we're not going to cover that. But several studies showed that the cost went down when they did cover it. That's pretty interesting. And part of that, uh, did you get into why you felt that or why they felt that went down? Because we have thoughts about it, right? Well, yeah, it, it did. It, it talked a lot about how... Um, there was multiple studies, you know, placebo versus non-placebo tests, as well as multiple tests or, you know, study groups where people change their nutrition and they change their behavioral patterns with um, people with uh, heart disease and other issues like that. And they saw the death rates go down and they saw the 
blood pressure rates go down and the heart disease rates go down because people change the, their lifestyles. Hey, we're going to tr try a more healthy lifestyle versus giving you drugs. And they monitored those people and obviously they improved. So obviously the, the long-term costs on the healthcare systems went down because these people were healthier naturally without a synthetic drug given to them. Right. Cause they were addressing the root of the problems, right? Which is healthy Correct. living, right? Not putting the bandaid on the broken arm. Like this is the whole thing. Pharma pharmaceutical companies seem to, cause we're this, this is just part one of this thing that we're talking about. We've kind of got two parts to this whole thing, right? Cause we're going to talk about the opioid yeah. stuff next. Um, but this is just part of the problem where they're masking the effects. They're masking the, um, the symptoms. They're not fixing the problem, which it, treat there's no money in cures there's only money in treatments yeah then that's one of my notes to too come back. <laughs> you stole my thunder thank you sorry bro okay yeah, i don't think so you are i i am i don't think you are i'm just, i'm happy that we're on the same page oh, is what i'm happy it. about okay from so from there um they were they were able to prove this right because like we talk about some some programs are getting put in place by governments and like we talk about it costing X and then next thing you know, it's 10 times that amount. I'm hoping that these numbers are correct. And obviously, like we said, we'll post. Well, we're, we're referencing a website, website right? right? So, so we, yeah. And it didn't have an exact number of how much it went down, right? It wasn't like a percentage just said it went down, right? Correct. Right. Okay, cool. What else we got on this, my friend? That's all I have on the natural medicine because it, it went down another rabbit hole. Do you, do you have anything else on the natural stuff? Yeah, I thought we were going to talk about just the, poly, poly, like, go through this whole article, right? Uh, yeah, that's all, I, that's all my notes on that. But, yeah, you can feel free oh. to well, just go saying, down the article. Like people don't, you know, um, politically speaking. Well, one of the things that really stuck out to me was, was it about chemotherapy being 2% effective? Did you read well, that in the article? Yes, I did. Yeah, I did, I did go down to that point. I think they said it was 4% it was effective, and then... No, it went. It was two percent effective. Then it went up to four, and then they said, or or the reverse of that, something like that. But so if if you the way you spin it, if it's did it increase by two percent or did it increase by fifty percent? How do you did it double or did it, so how do you the, depending on how the doctor spun it, that's how the patient received that information, and that's how they decided to go with chemotherapy or not. Right, they're saying it. It, the patient's risk dropped from four to two percent, so it went down two percent. Oh, the patient's risk. Okay. Yeah. So it's it's only a it's a two percent drop. It's not really a double. But from four to two, from is four to 50%. two is percent is a hundred percent actually, isn't it? It's double. It's a hundred percent drop. Or, okay. I'm sorry, it's a fifty percent drop from four. It's a hundred percent. Yes. I'm like, yeah. I'm doing the double half thing. D what? Yeah. You What's know, a double half? You know, you remember. <laughs> is that like cross canceling the <laughs> when you cross cancel the fractions and i got in trouble from the nuns yes you can't it always can't worked though yeah i know that's how you do it man no <laughs> well the thing is like it's i get when you talk about homeopathic things not being covered i do see the shyster element and it cost it having certain cost increases at scale maybe washington yeah. could handle it in the smaller numbers that they had to deal with or whatever or maybe their taxes cover it, whatever the increase that people wanting to pay to have that coverage or whatever. Yeah. You know? Okay. Um, it's just hard to say, but it, it is a little bit, once again, it's another system we talk about that, you know, cause we're going to go into the, two, into the system next. Right. I mean, yes. this is where we're going to get pretty harsh poopy face and, and honest about it. Um, but systems in place to keep control, keep money. Cause once again, they want to give you the boner pill. They don't want to give you <laughs> the diet that oh, increases your blood flow shit. to your penis, <laughs> right? Like, what, what's this whole thing about, what's everyone talking about the COVID thing, right? Everyone's waiting with bated breath for the, for the vaccine. No one's talking simple vitamin D supplement, vitamin C and zinc. And just take those three right now and you have, there's, it's at least anecdotally, if not shown to have some effect, some oh. positive effect. Okay. But it's vitamin D, C, and zinc. It's nothing. It doesn't cost, you know, why isn't the government sending packets out for that to each household? Like, that... Because there's no money in vitamin. Well, that's not true. There no, is... Well, I mean, there... There is money in vitamins, but... But they're not as big a lobby as the pharmaceutical well, company correct, lobby. Correct. Like, 
they're not making the gazillions that yes, Pfizer That's correct. and GSK and everybody. And I'm not calling a single one out in a specific case. We will because I've got one that I pulled up, and I think you're going to reference one in the next yeah. thing we talk about. Yeah. Um, and that's that's it. Kind of one one of these things. Just be really vigilant about this kind of stuff. And if if you can ask your employer to cover some things, ask them. Never hurts to ask. Yeah, absolutely. But I think it's a it's an overhaul of the of the healthcare industry that I think they're unwilling to do, both on a governmental level and because there's insurance and pharmaceutical companies in that are lobbyists. So the insurance, the pharmaceutical companies and the medical industry, as well as the federal government are not willing to revamp the system because it's too hard. Yeah. It's a massive undertaking, but you know, there's a lot of people that are not help, happy with their doctors. The average amount of time that someone sees their doctor is 11 minutes. Yeah, that was that's, in the article, too. That was that's crazy. That's fucking horrible, that's dude. That's a fucking shuffle you in, shuffle you out. Correct. How can you possibly get to understand someone's lifestyle or what they do when they're not at the doctor? Doctor asks you, do you smoke? No. How do you fucking know? They'll just say it so they don't get fucking reprimanded or something, right? Do you eat healthy? Yes. You know, like you don't get to know the patient. Yeah. You don't yeah, get to yeah, know yeah. them just yeah, asking yeah. the bullet point questions because even we have this ability to lie because we don't want to sound like we don't want to get reprimanded for our choices. Of course. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's like a weird shame there, you know, like, yeah, I go to McDonald's pretty much every day to get the large fries for a dollar. Yeah. And it's, it makes oh, me dude. really um, upset again that they don't have supersize anymore, bro. I know. But thank you to that phenomenal documentary, <laughs> Super Size Me, which is a pretty cool. That guy's pretty neat. But anyway, um, anything else? Like the one big one for this, I, it's my opinion. I understand like the homeopathic stuff, like the crystals and the salves and the bombs, but mental health, some counseling, psychology, psychiatry, NLP, some mental that should be covered. I that God agree so much, dude. Because I feel like the mental state of everyone is shit right now. And it does affect you physically. There is no doubt that your mood, your your pain, like if you have pain in your body, it affects your mood. The other way around, your good mood can affect your, how you feel physically as well. Yeah. Think about if the, the average American worker, if they are... If they are, if their emotional well-being and their mental health increases by 25%, 20%. Think about how more 10 even. Whatever it takes. Yeah. 17.6. They how much more effective they're going to be at their jobs, whether they're working from home or they're going to an office or when this thing ends we all go back to work, whatever it takes. Think about your if you're happier with yourself, the the trickle down effect is huge. So to me it Yes, it's expensive to cover to see a therapist or a shrink. But it's to me it's it's you're gonna see the rewards in that. I, I I don't know how to quantify that. And that's where businesses are like, I have to see hard facts. You have to show me an ROI. And right. that's where there's I believe there's the gap. Yeah, it is. And but I mean I I would like to think right now as a society, mental health, we've recognized that mental health is a probably the largest unaddressed problem uh perhaps but the i mean obviously it's coming it's the last few years it's been in the mainstream consciousness of everybody right yeah i mean i just feel so, like yeah. it's i'm just saying it's one of those things where i just feel like something to that effect should be covered even if it's a basic counseling service where there's like a separate a separate like department that does that like i mean like a, if we're going to do a governmental if we're going to cover it or something with insurance that a that you create a bureau of mental health and it's just counselor so it's you go into it like it's a so like just like child protective services it's mental health services or whatever yeah i see what you're saying uh, you know I'm, I'm sure there are some things out there but nothing to scale that we need i feel like everyone has feelings everyone gets hurt we can we can yeah and and we hurt each other when we're hurt. You know what I mean? Like there's a direct correlation between how we feel and how we treat others. And, and that can, you know, how many times have we said that kind of snowballs? Yeah. Uh, no, of so. course. Yeah. I totally get that. 
So back to you, and uh, we, we kind of, did we beat that horse pretty um, pretty well? We're good? Sure. My last point about that is, is there is there fear in the existing medical industry because of this? Because of people wanting to approach their own mental health differently? Or not their, I'm sorry, their own health. Their own, hey, hey, doc, I don't want to be on these pills anymore. Hey, I, I want to approach my health. I want to own my own health. I don't want to take your word for it. It's my body. It's my everything. So what's what do you suggest? Doesn't mean I'm going to do it. Do you think that there's a fear there of the system that's in place now is not as secure as it used to be? I would guess yes. Just the pharmaceutical losing it its hold, Grip. right? Because the don we're going to get into some shady shit going on with pharmaceutical companies and doctors, but a doctor who prescribes a medication shouldn't get paid for prescribing the medication. Sh shouldn't get a kickback. Shouldn't get a trip. Shouldn't get a jacket. Shouldn't get a fucking visor. Shouldn't get a baseball cap or a t-shirt or anything. I would agree. Like that's just my opinion. That is compensation. So a doctor should just look at, say this has been pr shown and I agree with the studies because I read the study. I agree that this does what it says it does. And I think this is good for you. That they shouldn't be scared then, right? They shouldn't be scared if that's how it is. But it's my opinion that it's not like that. And we're going to go into that next. I, I totally agree with you. It's very important that we make that distinction about whether the doctors are compensated for prescribing medication because then they are the bigger part of the system and a larger worst part because we trust them and i've got some interesting anecdotes we'll share in a little bit interesting anecdotes anecdotes and, and anecdotes anic and anakin skywalker dotes Ugh. darth vader dotes barfasaurus hey, rex david prouse who How about i know that? a moment of silence for the gentleman that played darth vader i know we're recording a month in arrears arrears but last yesterday i believe last it was. yesterday last, yeah, last night or yesterday, yes. sometime. All right. Twenty eighth, November twentieth, twenty twenty. David Prowse. Well, he was on our list. He was he was the body of Darth Vader, and he was the guy who carried uh carried Malcolm McDowell in uh, Clockwork Orange. Remember? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there was. I was wondering what list you, you were referring to. Yeah, two lists. Both. Both of them. Both lists. So uh, back to the back to reality. Back to life. Back to reality <laughs> and stuff <laughs> and other stuff too. Section two of today's podcast, uh, this subject evolved into um, a subject that's been bothering me for many, 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 many years because it affects me directly. So I, it, I've had it on my list of topics to discuss. And because of the why aren't homeopathic methods covered under insurance, it kind of snowballed into another topic that I had on my list to discuss, and that's um, oxy and other narcotics and the history of that and op opioids because um, it's affected my family directly, and it's a, it freaking sucks. You got anything before I move on? Just general pain management. Because, oh yeah, because I'm gonna bring up the stuff that I got involved with, and I've got stories about that, and go into some meetings and whatnot. And it, okay, it's just interesting. But please continue, because I know this one touches you. Sure. Uh, uh, Oxy was introduced in 1996 uh, by Purdue Pharmaceuticals, and it's a synthetic. Yeah, it's a fake drug made in a lab, a prescription drug. It's not from the poppy. To be no. clear. It's not a. It's not poppy seed derived into medication. It is correct. A completely from the ground up, chemically made product. Correct. Okay. It's made in a friggin' lab, right? Dude. I just, but it's very <laughs> well. That's what's very clear about this because that's one of the big issues, in my opinion. Okay. But please. Um. According to the New York Times, I read a lengthy article about it, which was. Very uh, in, in 2018, this article was written. It was very interesting. Uh, and I'll quote that a couple times here. Uh, the Food and Drug Administration approved Oxycontin in 1995. 
the agency permitted Purdue Pharma to make a unique claim for it, that its long-acting formulation was, quote, believed to reduce its appeal to drug abusers compared with shorter-acting painkillers like Percocet and Vicodin. You got anything on that? No. Keep the going. FDA's decision was not based on findings from clinical trials, but a theory that drug abusers favored shorter acting painkillers because the narcotic they contained was released faster, so it produced a quicker hit. So the FDA allowed them to say what they said based on a theory and no fucking evidence. Go team government. Uh, gee, I wonder how they pushed that through. Do you think they might have gotten something to say that? It's, isn't that called a lobbyist? That seems fucking ridiculous. It's the FDA is supposed to fuck. It's funny. We're talking about this pandemic and there's still there's still not a vaccine out that they they're claiming 90 plus percent, but it hasn't been cleared right by the FDA or whatever. Well, it's for, been tested on 44,000 people, right? But it's not been cleared by the FDA. Correct. Yet. It's yet not. This got pushed through. Yet this got pushed through, and it seems like, huh, what a great idea. You mean because Oxy on a got thought, pushed through? Right, Oxy got pushed well, through. Well, yeah, on but a, 1996 right. and today are very different times, right? They are different times, but but not in that case. One is how do you get an idea through is you kind of grease the wheels, right? Of course. Or grease the palms, whatever the fuck. What's that term? Gre both. Okay, both of them. <laughs> Back to you, Chuck. <laughs> Over to you, Frank. <laughs> uh so between 1996, when it was introduced, and 2000, the oxy gut went crazy. the The number of prescriptions that were written, and the a use and abuse of it across the country went crazy. Um, it became very, very common on the street. Um, a dollar pill, a one dollar pill at a pharmacy, was worth forty dollars on the street. Uh, there were were emails going back and forth with the company executives about people snorting oxy. And I had no idea that was a, th that was a thing. Like I didn't know that existed until a couple of years ago, a friend of mine told me that he did that. And I didn't, I went, what? He was going through a really, really hard time. Break up with the girl. They got back together. There was kids, this and that. And I went, oh, Holy fuck. I didn't know I didn't know that shit. <laughs> like, yeah. I took one because I hit my head and I liked the feeling. I didn't know you could snort it. Right. I was shocked. So this email. I, I didn't, until I saw that thing about crushing and snorting it, I was like, what? I thought you only snorted coke. And if you snorted <laughs> heroin, you almost died like in Pulp Fiction. That's the only two things that I had any or reference to Or in uh, The Dirt with Motley Crue. Sh sure. Yes. Also, Tambian. Tambian, tambourines. Uh, hey, mister, man. Correct. Uh... <laughs> Tertiarily, uh, there was oxy. There was three kinds: oxycotton, oxycodone, and MS Contin. MS Contin, also made by Purdue Pharmaceuticals. Th people on the street discovered how to extract morphine from it, so they could inject it. Now, this information about them injecting it on the street, the cost of the increase from a dollar to $40 on the street and people snorting it was all in company emails to the highest level executives within Purdue pharmaceuticals. And they knew, they knew how addictive it was and weren't they even saying, let's keep pushing it. I don't know if they knew how addictive it was. They were, they definitely were pushing the hell out of it. And there were many mentions in the article about the sales tactics that were used information that was pushed down to the salespeople on how to push the product to, to say how it was better than Vicodin and Percocet, as we previously mentioned, and how to get this drug to be pushed by doctors and prescribed. Yes. That's just craziness. Um, what else do you have on, on that part of it? Just how freaking ridiculously effective they're, pushing of it is do you ever see the video uh there's an it was an older african-american woman and they show her in the commercial for the opioid like for the oxycontin and she's like this has made my life so much better blah 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 and then they re 
they re uh interview her like 10 years later and she's just a shell of herself because she just hopped up on oxy and she's like it destroyed my life and it's just, I'll have to show that. I'll have to share that with you. I'll see if I can find that that video. But it it's pretty interesting. I think it might have been that weird that Netflix drug. There was a drug. There's a couple of drug yeah, documentaries on Netflix. I, I, yeah. But I think it was like a YouTube thing where they showed. You know, she was like one of the first like poster children for it. You know how they like Zimbaltics can blah blah blah. It's the person smiling, waving to their grandchildren. Yeah. You know, it was that woman that's like whose life was being saved by these opioids, and Oxy was making her allowing her to live her life, and then she comes completely back around. And she's like, it destroyed my life. So it's a before and after. Yeah. It's type a, of thing. Yeah. Okay. It's like ten years later after the effects of how it okay. took a hold of her addiction to it and all that other stuff. Okay. And it's heartbreaking. It's har- absolutely heartbreaking. Wow. I no, I would I I don't I want to watch it but I don't want to watch it. So, I probably should, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what to do, man. Well, what's your personal connection to this uh specifically? Have you do you want to share that even deeper Not really, or you But I will. I mean, you don't have to. I mean, it's it's up to you, man. Uh, my mom has been, my mom has been on Oxy for 17 years. Um, and I, uh, my dad and I, my dad passed away four years, almost four years ago. And my dad and I have had several conversations, um, in the past, you know, from when she started taking it until when he passed away that my mom's a drug addict, that she's addicted to narcotics. And, um, about a year ago, my mom finally admitted that she's a drug addict and she takes three oxys a day. And what I found out in the past f- six months is that the dosage she takes three times a day is double what I was given when I fell because I had an aneurysm and I cracked my skull and I was fucking flabbergasted. I found this out when my mom, my mom is now 78. She's, she was 77 years old when I saw the bottle and I went, Oh my God, this is fucking double what I was given by my neurologist for a fucking mental head breaking aneurysm seizure there was a mass in my brain right yeah and they gave me the they, low yeah and my mom has double and does that three times three a day. times a day every single day and i do understand that the human body becomes well, i don't know what the, what the adjusted hell sure well i mean it's like a tolerance thank you so my mom's like oh hey i'm taking a pill and doesn't do anything for me anymore right so they give oh hey take two a day and then over years she takes three a day and then I went in July, 2020 this year, when I moved her out to, I, I spent, we got a two bedroom hotel room and then we drove to Arizona from California. We were, oh, I set the alarm so we can get up and move and shit. We were awake for less than 90 seconds. And my mom goes, can you get me my pills? I was like, oh wow. my God, are you fucking serious? fucking serious it seems frustrating but that's what addiction is and she probably didn't even know it or doesn't even think about it you know what i mean like it's just her day you know the final point on that is that my dad told me several times the in the last 10 years of his life that he, he went to my mother's pain management doctor because my mom had like 19 doctors because she's on 11 different prescription meds. She's been on at least one prescription med since 1979. So for 41 plus years, she's been on at least one medication, and she's now on 11. Now, that's not an exaggeration. She's on 11 different prescription meds. Right. And that's, I have a huge, massive fucking problem with that. So my dad told me he went to see my mother's pain management doctor alone to talk to the pain management doctor about getting my mom off of narcotics what no matter what they are right and it, he's my dad said it and my dad and i were having a drink after dinner and my mom had went to bed whatever and he said it was completely worthless he he he, he was concerned you know he's he was very concerned about his wife being a drug addict yeah so he he he, he tried to make 
It was man upon deaf ears, basically, right? Um, I mean, for the most part, he said it it, it was a helpless, like it was worthless to, for him to even do that because it changed nothing. Correct. Can, can you imagine? Can you imagine making an appointment for a doctor that's not even yours? You, you're, you, hi, hi, Doctor Robinson. Hi, can I? Yeah, can I make an appointment at ten fifteen Thursday? Okay, thanks. See you there. It's not even your doctor. Right. You go down there. And I'm um, sorry, you're not my patient. How can I help you? Hi, I want to talk to you about my loved one. I'm so worried about my loved one and their addiction to a narcotic that you've prescribed over X number of years. Who does that? Like, very, I don't know many people that would do that. I mean, my dad was a major prick for a long time, but that's a pretty amazing thing that he did or tried to do, right? And he was concerned about her until the end, you know? Yeah, but, like, your dad can be multiple things. Of course. He was a war hero. Yeah, well, sure. Uh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, I yeah. Mean, he, he served in two he wars. He served in two fucking wars. He did, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, he was abusive. He can, you know. Yeah, to, yeah, yeah, you're he, right. He, he can be multiple things, you know. Every, uh, yes, sir. And that's that's what, it's really weird because we talk about labels, right, and we put people in these boxes. Yeah, yeah, and that's but, not fair, right? But no, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, once again, this is a not conscious. We talk about things that that um, just help open our eyes to other ideas, right? I agree. This is one of those things where you know he can be both amazing and challenging. You know, um, so in in this case, he was a loving, loyal husband to your mom. Yeah, and wanted the best. What he felt he could help her get the best for her, and he felt that wasn't happening. And now it's pretty cool that he took that stand. I mean, that's, you know, it's both the greatness and tra challenge of him. Yeah, he did the right thing, right? Yeah. yeah. But what made that great was also tough on you because of, of how he was harsh, right? So, Well, yeah, but, but that's not the point about no, this is that no, but his, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the fact that he, he, he really tried. He really, really tried to help my mom, and he, he tried to do the right thing. But, you know, um... That shit is incredibly, incredibly addicting. Yeah. So. I hear you. What else do you have about Purdue and all that? Um. Eventually, in 2007, the federal government uh, took Purdue Pharmaceuticals to court. And the company and the executives, the top three executives, paid a combined... $634 million in fines. And the top three guys were re required to perform community service. All right. The My question to you, check Companies or people? The top three guys in Purdue. In Purdue. In Purdue. My question for you, check Mark. Yes, sir. $634 million. Where did that money go? I don't know what, where criminal things are earmarked this is a government suing them correct yes yeah, so it has to i'm sure there are once monies go into some kind of justice fund i'm sure they vote on that but i i don't i don't know that much about the legislative branch but i think that's a great it's a great question shouldn't that i mean well i'm sure it's available for public record i'm just yeah. saying we don't you and i are not we're the lay person we're so distracted with our life right well, you know people don't even want to talk about the stuff we want to talk about sometimes right. they're distracted about. Right. Think about that. Yeah, question. no, no, you're right. But I was thinking like, okay, so that, that lawsuit was started in 07. I don't know when they finished it. It could have been 07 or 2010. So it's been 10 to 13 years, right? A long and time appeals. Ago. Well, yeah. Like they don't they, pay. Yes. How many times do you think they're appealing? They're, 17. They're, right. They're going to keep appealing this because it costs them less and they're going to die before they have to pay that 634. It's going to cost them 50 million in, in lawyer fees. Right. So they'll just do that. Right. Isn't yeah. that what I would, if you had that avenue to do it because the legal system allowed for that loophole. Yes. Wouldn't you take advantage of that every of time? Of course. Of course I would. Like if it's available to be done and, and a workaround, I'm going to do it. We take the path of least resistance. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, but I was thinking that that um, how do I word it? Uh, the government sued them, right? So or press charges, 
criminal charges for their activity regarding Oxy and the fact that they knew it was a problem and they knew that it was being sold on the streets and there was pharmacies in several states that wouldn't stock it because they were scared they were going to get robbed, et cetera. And they knew about all this crap, right? Right. So those, those lawyers working for the government are being paid by the taxpayers. So it's not like they're working pro bono, right? They're that it's not like, oh hey, we got six hundred and thirty-four million dollars. We can know we can get a yacht now. Like that's not their money. That's the government's money. Right. right. So why isn't that really, money it's the people's money? Yeah, when you exactly. Think about ultimate if it goes to the government, it goes to the people. It or <laughs> no it doesn't. Well that's the philosophy. That's how it's written. It should. That's how it's written. Does it? All of it, no. We can't. Right. So we why can't. doesn't that money go towards drug programs or Directly getting people off the right. street? Or, you know, hey, I see that you're buying meth. Let me help you. Let's get you some dinner. Let's, what you know, hey, let's get whatever it's going to take to get that person back right. into society. But once again, with... I'm going to I'm going to guess or venture a guess that with appeals, they don't have six hundred and thirty four million dollars. It is not settled until the final appeal, the ink dries on the final appeal and the final verdict is made. So it could be six thirty four now. They appeal at four hundred million. They still don't have it because they're gonna appeal it again. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I, so, I do, yeah. Like but yes, once that money's retrieved, if it ever does get retrieved, yeah. How? Right? How do they you know, how do they get, you know, where does it go to your point? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I, I'm, there has to be a, a transparent way for, for voting on, on money for the justice department. Maybe it goes towards fighting crime or some other things, right? Like where Batman. Earmarked. Cause it is technically the justice department that is suing. It's really not the government. I mean, it's a branch of, it, yes. so to the victor go the spoils, right? So maybe the Justice Department gets all of that money f to allocate for all of their programs. I don't know. Maybe, it, or, it su or it gets subsidized. I understand. In theirs. Great question. We'd have to really dig deep to, and if anyone else knows, if anyone knows oh. about constitution uh. and legislative rules for things like that, for uh, justice money, please let us know. I have, to ask, I have to ask you a question. Does OJ know where that money is? Hello, Twitter world. I don't know. I do not remember. I went black. <laughs> I blacked out. That's what I meant. I, I blacked out. I came to. What? And I saw red. Whoa. Whoa. I saw red. Yeah, exactly. I was going to do it. You, uh, when you opened up the door. You have to say hi, Felicia. Hi, Felicia. <laughs> she always, I, she's, I, she said on Thanksgiving that uh, she goes, oh, when, where, whenever, there you go. it's There's my you camera go. now. Oh. So Sorry, bro. Whenever. On Thanksgiving, whenever you go, hi, Felicia, she goes, hi. Hi. Oh, she waves. Hi. She waves. <laughs> I remember that. That's funny. Oh, that's great. Uh, uh, anything else on $634 million? No, I've got one after this, though. So I, that's why I wanted you to, because this one I know was one you could really share because you read this one deeply. I have another one I want to bring to the table that I that just discussed. Uh, the last thing I have on that article is that uh, more than 100,000 Americans die each year from complications caused by prescription drugs being used as intended. Right, as prescribed. Correct. 100,000 deaths. And 2 million get admitted, they said, right? Wasn't 2 that? million are hospitalized, are hospitalized right. with complications. complications. So think about that. 100,000 deaths as prescribed. Like, take it exactly as intended. And then and still 100,000 people die from, just, from the medications. And what the New York Times said was, Quote, but the American public has come to accept such occurrences. And that's fucked up, but it's true. Yeah, but I never heard that 100,000 people died. No one, Nor did no one I. Said, it, it reminds me of the NFL with, with concussions. Yeah. It's not like they admitted this shit was happening. Now they said, hey, everybody, just so you know, people are getting hurt in the head. Why would you admit something you don't have to? Like, hi, our prescription drugs, if you take them as intended, 100,000 people. But then you listen to those fucking commercials with the side effects and are like, there, there was a stroke medication whose side effect it's may stroke. cause stroke. Or, oh, this, this mental health pill will, you could have suicidal ideations because it's supposed to make you feel better. 
what how does make you feel better and ending your fucking life how are those, those two are, things those are two extremes those bro seem like the opposite they don't seem like the same no thing. those are the opposite they i hope they are like well sometimes people do would love to go i mean it's, <sighs> sometimes people feel that they're ready it's really sad i think it's it's outside of the numbers of people who actually do it we have to we have to do one of those episodes um but Okay, we're is how's Purdue? Are we good? We're, we're um, closing what else you have there? That's all. I I mean I have one another point I'm gonna save. Oh, you want to save it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Sure. Or I can just tell you now. It's up to you because I, I was gonna ask you. Okay. Well, let's do this. I'll I'll ask you about my next question because okay. there's a little bit I have that, and then please share that, and then I've got one one other okay. story to share. Go. Um, ha, now what the thing I was talking about synthetic. Yes, sir. Ha, this is what really concerns me is the synthetic part is really the scary part, even more than the opioid, because a natural poppy product, yes, addictive, but it's natural. Correct. Your body naturally doesn't reject it. It, it actually accepts it in some portion of its body because we all come kind of, you know, we are omnivores and we have some aversions to certain plants but yeah. some yeah, things yeah, yeah. like have chemical things like poison we'll talk ivy. About cannabis and things like that how there's a chemical reaction yeah there, that it's not like alcohol that kills brain cells that gives you the high it actually is a chemical lock and key system where the the thc attaches to the brain and gives you that euphoric yes. feeling so it's a much different way of it affecting but synthetic is what scares me were you not aware of how dangerous synthetic versus natural like natural opioid for example, would be. Yes, I I am aware. Yes, um, and I. Do you have a point about that? Because I don't. I, I do. I, okay, because I have a tangent. No oh, tangent away. Okay, we'll so get back. I know I know I'm I know what we're gonna finalize on. So tangent okay, away, so I I've been very concerned for a long time about my mom because she's on eleven different synthetics right now, so. And not just my mother, but there's tens of millions of people around the world on synthetic prescription drugs. I'm one of them, right? Oh, hey, P Peralta, your thyroid's fucked up. Take this pill. I broke down last year, and I finally went to my doctor and said, look, I have not slept well in years. I can't fall asleep. I can't stay asleep. I'm done. I, melatonin's not working. I, I, I need help. They, here you go. Here's a sleeping pill. Boom, like a freaking baby, right? But that means there's there's two pills I'm on right now. Two synthetics. Go ahead, sir. Well, just one quick point. Yeah. Not habit forming. True. If you take it every day, it then becomes habit forming. It's habit it's a habit. Right. How dare you tell me that it's all you're saying is what? I don't shake if I don't take it, but I need it to get to sleep or I feel like I need to take it. It's right. still an addiction. Right, right, right. Absolutely Not habit true. forming is such a stupid fucking thing because when you take it habitually, it's a habit. Yeah. Therefore, it's habit forming. I, I get back you, to your dude. Point. And thyroid wise. Well, yeah, no. So that's just a, there's men, there's millions of people similar to my mother that are on many prescriptions, right? So I've been concerned for. 20 years that or more like my mom's been on a med for 41 years so what as to your point synthetic it's it's every single drug is made in a lab it's not designed to be ingested by a human neither is this beautiful soda pop right here this is not real right. this is all fake it's got all kinds of neurotoxins and they're so delicious reminds me of gmos that one doesn't have neurotoxins. That one's got cancer causing oh, shit. Oh, it's got all the cancer causing toxins. I've got, I've got the one toxins, with the neurotoxins. Bro. I don't allow you to have. I don't allow you to have the one in in my house. In my house. In in, in the tree house. In the tree house. You do not get <laughs> neurotoxins, sir. You get cancer. You get you get carcinogens. Cancer free? Only. No, carcinogens only. Those are my favorite. Um, uh, so yeah. my, the point is, it, all these drugs are fake, right? So right. I thought to, I've been thinking to myself for twenty years, what is this doing to my mom? And then, okay, what is it doing to all these people that are taking all these drugs? What is it doing to me? So I'm taking these stupid pills every fucking night. What is 41 years of prescription drug use, what does that do to my mother? Her kidney, her liver, kidneys, liver, heart, lungs, 
nervous system, and her brain. Quality of life, not just extension. Of well, life, her quality right? of life is definitely not a. That's never been good, but. Right. Her but she's life, a little bit of a. She, yeah, well, she's a hi, she, no, she's a massive hypochondriac. Okay. I just well, I didn't want to, you know. No, I, I don't give wanna, a fuck. Well, I'm not here to slander your mom. Well, right? it's fine. She's a lovely, lovely woman, she is. but she has a drug problem, a prescription drug problem, and she admitted that, and that sucks. And I don't want other people to have to deal with what I'm dealing with. You know what I mean? So, I'm with you, man. it it sucks, but she's 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 beautiful, right? And you know. What is that? What is forty years of tr of prescription drug use due to the human body? The, that's that's my that's my concern. Is that I don't think we as a human race, I don't think we know, right. and I don't think it's like the GMO question with food, right? Yeah, because, we don't. We're not designed right. to eat that shit. G yeah, GMO stuff is actually altered things. Allegedly Correct. didn't. I mean, please tell me if I'm wrong. Please tell me if I've been snoped or whatever. But <laughs> isn't there like a chicken that, that's that they make? Like with like eight legs or four uh, legs or something. I don't know. I don't know no? anything okay. about that. I I've heard maybe it's just wive tail shit. So I I can totally withdraw eight the legs. question. That's weird. But like they they give them antibiotics to make them fatter. Yeah. And that's actually really dangerous because bacteria builds an an immunity yes. to antibiotics, right? Yes, it's kind of like how we got MRSA and how we've got these other things yes. going on. They don't. They're being it unnecessarily fed antibiotics. To plump them up, not to protect them from disease. Correct. But that will give us some kind of blight potentially yes. down the road because a bacteria will like will be immune or be we will, won't be immune. Right. No, the bacteria will not be killed by this antibiotic Correct. anymore. It will. It and will. We will it die. will be immune, and we will be affected. Directly. Correct. Yes, sir. And yes, that sir. can be bad. And I know that's a slight tangent to that. No, but that's it's, totally it's accurate. Part of the synthetic GMO talk. You know, once again, genetically modified Organism. organisms. Yes, I think sir. it was. So making corn, super corn, and all that kind Mega of stuff, corn. right? <laughs> Mega corn. <Ooh. laughs> um, so please tangent, uh, tangent away, uh, complete. Your so, thought. what does forty years of drug use do to the human body? Do we know? It, are there studies of prolonged usage, and are there studies that are are not public knowledge? I would sure as fuck, I mean, bet there are, where is my tinfoil hat? So, um... Uh, I agree with you. Uh, there has to be, man. There, what, what is, well, what is or, that? Or, or we really don't know, and we don't have enough time. There hasn't been enough time to actually... But it's been 40 that. years, dude. Yeah, but I mean, like, these things hit you very small. They take little chips out of you almost, it feels like. Yeah. Not, not a huge Well, chunk. it's every single day, so right. it's a minute amount. Right. And it's such a slight change... You look 10 years apart, yes. Right. But it might not be day to day. You don't see that change because it's just right. that little, you know, like, you know, like time last footage, right? Correct. Well, like that lady, we were, like yeah. the lady 10 years apart, good, like, her life changed yeah. drastically. And I've been really concerned for a long time about this of, you know, you're talk, your, your organs have to process everything that you eat and the lotion you put on your skin and Anything you come in, lotion on his skin. yeah, especially Buffalo Bill. Anything you come in contact with, your organs have to process. You know, including mm. stress. We've well, been talking about sunscreen, for example. Well, like, yeah, it's like protects you from UV. Okay, great, but the stuff that's in sunscreen is our chemicals. Is, is very our caustic chemicals. and just, and the skin is a great absorber. Have you have you ever seen the one where like the guys put his finger in like chlorine water and it just absorbs right into the skin? That's it, terrifying. It's scary as AF. But Let's doesn't do AF. um anyway. That also stops corona, right? According to the president. Bleach. Let's Sorry. Not, I know we can't <laughs> Come on, man. I had to say bro. it. It's fake news. Huge. Well, I wish I wish people would not Dude. take people don't take things out of context. Anyway, um I don't know who can uh, the point is yeah. prolonged use of any prescription drug can't be good for you yeah. because it's fake. Right. I mean, that's just like and eating Cheetos every fucking day. I love Cheetos, right. but fuck, man, have some broccoli. And I get it. And poppy, then chop it. Poppy opioid, opioid from poppy. I'm not saying that is good for you. But it's better. It is less terrible. Caustic. It is less <laughs> dangerous because of its natural elements. Yes. It's, and here, and this is why I ask this. So, 
do you are you familiar with THC, cannabis smoking, and marijuana? You've heard stories. How many people have overdosed smoking marijuana? Zero. Zero. Okay. Zero. I have an article here, and I will post it. Once again, Boston.com. Shut up, bro. Boston's dude, crushing the news. So, dude, it's not even the globe, though. This is just. Uh, I don't think it's a globe. Maybe it is. Um, Forty-six people overdose at a New Haven park from synthetic marijuana. Is that K two? K two synthetic marijuana. That's that spice stuff that has yeah, it's K2 the fake stuff shit. in it. Right. People are saying forty-six people overdosed Wednesday from a suspected bad batch of K two synthetic marijuana at or near City Park in Connecticut. Forty-six in one night. And this is dated, this was updated August 15th, 2018. So it might have happened right before that. This is from the uh, Associated Press. I'll put this one up as well. 46, not a single person from marijuana, from cannabis, smoking oh, cannabis, natural. has ever overdosed, yeah. ever. Well, I mean, you can overdose from heroin, from natural. Well, I'm just saying, marijuana is not one of those drugs that you overdose from. Yeah. But synthetic marijuana killed 46 in one night. Yeah. Because it was just, oops. According to the Gladiator podcast about Aaron Hernandez, he went on a two-day binge on K2 just before he killed himself. So that also shows you it's not... In jail? Yes, sir. Uh, I believe that was mentioned in part seven. It's not a... It's a, it's, a, it's a very, very bad thing. Oh, once again, synthetic, something that's, something that's fake and something that's bad for you. And, I mean, you hit the nail on the head, man. I, I bought chicken at... I won't mention the place and the goddamn chicken breasts was like, it would, they were huge. I'm like what? That's like a Turkey. That's not a size of a chicken. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. And look at all the Costco ones that they, they put up yeah. They're They're four bucks, five, four or five bucks. And they're fucking huge. Yeah. They're super gigantic. Yeah. chicken In the mass that they do. Make Remember there's 30 of them at every fucking Costco. Yeah. At all times. Yeah. As people are pulling them off the fucking shelf. Yeah. That's constantly being, replenished throughout the day and like it's i don't know the numbers but it's got to be thousands a day well and you also got to think about you know right now where we are there's four or five costcos within a half hour of us and that's all happening that's what i mean the volume and there's 200 major metropolitan areas in the united states alone right that's that that's crazy I um, totally agree. So you had one more point before I wanted to close out with okay. this one company. Is that correct? I did, sir. So Ill, Ill regardless, what are we ever going to know the long-term effects of prescription drugs like my mom? You know? And there are 543 Costco scores, stores just in the United States. Just 543 500, Costco's. 500. So yeah, 500 I times, I, say s- I switch. I don't go to Costco anymore. Half, half a gabillion half a day. Half a gobillion a day. Anyway, no. Uh, my last uh, point, sir, is, as I mentioned a year and a half ago about, I went to my doctor and I, the sleeping pill thing, right? And they go, oh yeah, here's some trazodone. Boom. So they, as they said, take it as needed. So I was taking it like twice a week. Can you explain what trazodone is, please? Trazodone is a sleeping pill. Oh, okay. It's a, Thank you. It's a fake. But I don't know Ambien. Oh, I only know okay. Ambien, for it's, example. I don't know trazodone. I know like <sighs> Xanax. I don't know like Zoloft or... Or all the other stuff, you know what I mean? Like, okay, yeah. So it's a sleeping pill. It's a sleeping it, pill. It's like an Ambien competitor. I don't know because it, I've never, I've never, you know, I hear these crazy things about Ambien. Like, I bought a crystal cow that showed up. You know what I mean? Like, I hear these crazy <laughs> okay, things. A, I hear these. But cra- you got a Prime two day shipping for uh, free. Woo! Bro. I, you know what the hell, crystal cow? So I hear these crazy things about Ambien, right? So I've never tried Ambien, uh, whatever. But yeah, Trazodone's a sleeping. Not pill. Tambien. Not Tambien. That's totally different. That is for dry elbows. That's for us. And for podcasts only. For podcasts only with dry elbows for and, and beard weird earlobes. Tambien. Tambien. It does not. It's not. It's not habit forming. It might be habit forming because you might want to listen to more Tambien. Try Tambien. You might want to listen to Tambien. Tambien. If you experience death, please stop taking Tambien right away and call your doctor. Yes, please. If you, call you your know, witch doctor. If you're dead, please call us <laughs> immediately for assistance. That's why it's funny. So uh, I. I went back to my doctor about a, four months ago, and I said, look, I've been on this a year. I, I don't want to be on this anymore. How do, how do I get off of this? How do I get on? I, I it, it doesn't always work, the, tra- the sleeping pill. It works for the most part, but about once a week, I'll wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and I'll have a hard time falling asleep. I'll be up for about an hour, and then I'll kind of fall back asleep. 
So I told her about that. And so I'm like, okay, can I, how do I get off this drug? And how do I go to a more natural remedy? We talked for 25 minutes. At the very end, she says, well, maybe you should just start taking two. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look on your face. Do it again. Squishy face. Boom. What? Yes. I went specifically to see her. Specifically. For help. To get off of the drug. To get help. To get off of the drug she prescribed me, which was working for the most, I mean, 90, okay, 88% of the time it was working, right? It's like Sex Panther. It's like Sex Panther. (laughs) It's, It's Sleep Panther. So I specifically went to get to talk to her to get off the drug. Hey, doctor, how do I get on something more natural? An herb? I'd, I've been on melatonin, so I've, I I don't want to go back to that because it doesn't work for me anymore. What do I do? Help me. Help me help you, help you, help me, whatever the fuck. Okay, Jerry. After 20 Easy, Easy J, JM. Slow it down. Pump you the complete me, check mark. <laughs> After 20, you had me at hello. <laughs> I'm not crazy. Yeah, you are. After 25 minutes, she says, "Take d- d- double your current dosage." Um, I, it sounds to me like that's exactly 180 degrees opposite of what you were trying to accomplish. Correct, sir. Because she doubled your dosage. You want you want to go from one to zero, and you went to two. I and I have not. No, not that you took two. Cor- she just said that because correct, she's, sir. Yeah, what I wanted and what she said were complete opposites. I'd be like, who, in whose back pocket are you, lady? Yes. Like, I ha- and I'd be like, I'll call you doctor because you went through the medical training, but in whose back pocket are you fucking sitting right now? Because this is ridiculous. I'm asking for fucking help. Can you please help me? Yes. Take double what you want to get off of. Off of what you want to get. Whatever, whichever way. I don't even need to use Queen's <laughs> English in this one. Fuck this. This is bullshit. All the prepositions, bro. That, my heart breaks for you that 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 there are people that you had to fucking see that gave that kind of sage advice or expert advice. What I don't even know what the fucking term is. It doesn't seem expert, though. I'm going to say that right now. To summarize, I have not taken two. Um... <laughs> And I gave her my copay, and uh, I don't, I don't, I was very disappointed. But I think the point is of that idiocy was that uh, I think it goes to show that, that I think that's a great example of the medical industry. Like I go, yeah. I go see a medical professional and I want help to become more natural and to help me like, I want to be a better person. I want to become more natural. I want to do what's best for me. Oh yeah, take another drug. Take another synthetic. Take something that more that's fake. What? I I just think that that's a massive sign about it's it speaks volumes to what the medical industry and the pharmaceutical industry is doing to everyone. And I and I don't know what it's like outside the United States, but I bet it in in the western world it's probably the fucking same. Because there's money all over, right? Yes, it's bullshit. Um, oh, I'm, horseshit. I'm trying to find something out horseshit. <laughs> no, it is. Um, but I, will, I just want you to complete your com- I, thought on this because I've got one last case I want to talk about. It has Arizona ties. It's very important to this whole discussion about opioids and the crisis. I'm done, sir. Okay. Are you familiar with Insys, the company Insys. Uh, I, 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 I don't think so. It sounds familiar. So they're an Arizona company. The owner is a billionaire, and they made fentanyl. Okay. I'm familiar with that. Why don't you tell people what fentanyl is? Fentanyl is opioid times opioid times opioid to the power of opioid. But does isn't it like an upper? Like it helps you... It's no, it's, it makes you stop breathing. It's, it's the strongest. Let me put it this way. If a person is overdosed and you suspect fentanyl, medical personnel have to wear gloves to touch them because it can go, they can get, they can get secondary overdose 
through the skin from touching. Yeah, okay. I thought it was. I think you meant fen fen. Yeah, fen fen's different. Fen okay. fen's like a diet pill or something. Yeah. Okay. Heart. So I got confused. Fucked okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. This is fentanyl. Yeah. 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 What? Um, what? Why did they make it? What was it designed for? It's really just a super painkiller. Like okay. It's super, so is it? It's a narcotic. It's a narcotic. Okay. Yeah. It's it's an opium. Okay. It's an opioid, but like it's the opioid of opioids. It's it's just the strongest, most powerful. Literally, we're talking about one grain or two grain. Oh, I think up as little as three grain can kill a person. Whatever the th- grain, I think grain is like one part per million or whatever, like whatever the milligram. I don't know what the grain amount is, but it's three of those have, someone was on three of those and killed them. Um, yeah, so it's not good. It's really bad. Okay. The lawsuit is this. So I have this article I'll put up as well. Insys files for Chapter 11 days after landmark opioid wow. settlement of $225 million. Oh, yeah, you can see. I totally forgot. Um, $225 million. That's just this one company, and they only had assets of 175 or something. So $175 million. So they filed for Chapter 11. This is what they did. I'm ready. They bribed doctors oh, to prescribe the fucking shit. In addition, there are claims that they called the insurance companies and said that the patients requesting it had cancer so that it would cover the cost so that they could make more, so they could sell it more because people couldn't afford it on, you know, on their own. Yeah, so that insurance would cover it. Right, so we talk about you come in yeah. today talking about holistic, holistic being covered and it being scary. This is an FDA-approved fucking medication that they... That they um, allowed, right? Yeah. And that they were calling to get it covered through the fucking government, the government guidelines, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cancer patients can get this as part of their treatment. Well, they lied because people do that because it's there's money in it. And why does every fucking billionaire look like the creepiest motherfucker? Yeah, it looks like Al Roken fucked... Um, Ben Stein and then like and Henry Kissinger. <laughs> <laughs> this is my billion dollars. I am an Ephra man. You want to flip him up real quick? Just hit three and then go back to you, and then talk about this. He looks like an evil dude. Yeah. All right. So when yeah. was that? So this is this was article was June tenth, two thousand nineteen. So this was only very few, recently. Very recently, yeah. But okay. I remember seeing this, and we talked about it. Like, it's fentanyl. It fucking kills people. And they paid doctors to prescribe it. And then they called the insurance companies and said the patients pres- that it was for whom it was prescribed had cancer. So that it would be paid for. Yeah. Are you fucking, how much more evil can you be just in general? How, how, how much? Well, it's all for money, right? Does, yeah, it doesn't does justify it. Does the it? article say how many people have died because of fentanyl? I didn't read that deeply into the article. I was more just on the settlement of the money. But this, once again, goes to the Justice Department. So, so the federal government sued them? Yes, this was. And I know the Arizona State, that's how, where I first heard the story, was the Arizona State Attorney General. Okay. When I watched the news, remember in the morning I used to watch the news, and then I stopped? Sure. Because the news is equals horrible. shit, is worse than people. <laughs> well, people <laughs> run the news, right? Sure. Sure. We'll go with that. Yeah. Um, but to that end, uh, yeah, it's just, oh, here, they also lied here, lied to insurance companies to ensure they would cover the substance prescriptions, which can cost $10,000 a month or more. 10000 a month per person or more. Holy fuck, I didn't see it was that expensive. Holy shit. Between 2012 to June of 2015. So they brought, uh, in the company employees enlisted physicians to prescribe the medicine, medication, which is a hundred times stronger than morphine in high doses and often to people who did not need it and then lied to insurance companies to cover it up to $10,000 per person, per lie, per time, per prescription. Holy fuck. This, and this is why, this is why the systems get created or this is how systems get corrupted or taken advantage of or whatever. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Please finish this because I'm now I'm disgusted. Well, it just reminds me of how it's it's almost like I don't know what other word to use besides template, but this is just like the Catholic Church. This is just like 
every other cover up, well, not not just like every other cover up, but because this was about money, you know. Well, the church is about money too. Well, it's so, about resources. Well, Let's just, well, it's resources and keeping your power, power or something, power, money, fame. Yes, One, yes. There's like the three check marks, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's three check marks. There's three. Do you have, are you a triplet? There are three tenets to the, I. What would you have? You have one of three choices. You have money, fame, or power. Which one do you want? Money, fame, or power. You get one of three. I want money. You want money. Money goes away. You spend is gone. Well, I mean, if I, as long as I have enough that I can retire on. But I'm, fame and power are the ones that are lasting, right? Because with <sighs> power you have influence. With fame you have power. You can have power. You can have influence. You know what I mean? There's, I understand. I just don't give a fuck about no, those two things. But most you people don't. do. You I understand. Don't. I, I I get it. But you also are, are not weirdo. greedy. Well, you're not greedy. Yeah, I'm. So you'd be simple. like, hey, mate, take care of my means. I'm good. Yeah. But with that, they just want more because people who are who get something, the one human condition that you can always bank on is we, whatever we have, we want more. Of course. We, there is an internal, whatever it's an, an ambition or a covet, coveting There's never or enough. something. We I get it. always want more. Yeah. Because we're, I think every animal is wired that way to want more than what they have. Just yeah. in a general direction, right? It's just how we do it that seems to be fucked up. This is not the best way to have more, in my opinion. Uh... Yeah. And I'm and I'm good. So please close it out, man. It 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 just I think it speaks to a bigger issue about the I don't want to say the human condition, but the human is like, oh hey, Purdue Pharmaceutical. We made a drug that helps people block the pain, right? So they had a head injury or they had a broken leg or they had a Back surgery. Let's give them a drug. Oh shit! It's fucking super addictive. Oh fuck! They're using it on the streets. Are right, how much more are we gonna cover this up? At, at what point do you get? Do you do you wave the red flag? Go hey everybody, we have problems. Oh no, we're not gonna do that because we're making fucking a billion dollars, and this insists or whatever the fuck they made a shitload of money too. So they made. I mean, the owner's a billionaire. So. It was. <laughs> he's he's protected. Remember the company filed, right? Like how oh. you know how these see that's the other thing. There's I don't know how you can do it legally because I'm sure they've tried to wrestle with this. But how do you make a man who heads this ridiculousness accountable ultimately for this? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he knows. To your point, emails shuffling back and forth, right? Yeah. How do you make individuals fucking accountable to this shit? Uh, you put their, hold their balls to the fire. <laughs> Ouchies. Well, you know, if people are suffering because you want to get richer, you're already rich, man. Like, come on. How much is enough? It's, it's not. Oh, it's not. Okay. Oh, you're worth 500 million. Oh no. It has to be 17 more million than that. That's just ridiculous. I, it, it all because of greed and power and control, it's just, it's un, it's unreal. I agree. I just agree, man. I don't know what to say it's to very, that. very, very frustrating that the, that, I, that the human wants to be the puppet master just so that they can control other people and make money and they don't care about the people that they're walking on. The... I, I, and I wonder how many Americans have a have a narcotic, a prescription narcotic addiction. It's got to be. I mean, there's what 320 million people in, in America, right? Mil it's probably millions. Take a step back. How about just just a prescription for a narcotic? Whether you, it's even whether it was ever fulfilled or not. Well, me by you, I me, right. I, but I'm just I, saying. I just don't use it because right. it's just scary as fuck. But that's my point. Is take a step back. Look at all the people who have been prescribed it, whether they take it or not. Look at that number, because that number is what doctors are pushing on us, regardless. Yeah. yeah you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, Whether yeah, It's yeah. not just the people who are taking it. It's they're pushing it regardless of what we're taking. It's like, it reminds me of, like, YouTube recommendations. <laughs> it's like they're pushing you the way they want oh, you to go, okay. right? I didn't get like, it for a second. Right. It's like they're recommending or, you know. So here's, here's a, an, an interesting anecdote. 
that I'd like to share before closing it. I went, I was at a, um, at a medical marijuana dispensary, uh, getting educated because my ex-girlfriend's father was diagnosed with stage four cancer. And we were looking at Rick Simpson oil and some other CBD treatments, some cannabis treatments and some things like that. We're trying to get information in the middle of this thing. There's more, more old than you'd expect. It's probably predominantly old. Two thirds of the people were over 50. It was an interesting number. Okay. And we're talking pain management, right? Yeah. Woman raises her hand. She goes, excuse me, should I, my doctor just, you know, prescribed fentanyl or some opioid to me. Should I trust him? <laughs> like you're, if you're questioning whether you should trust your doctor, that means you no. shouldn't fucking trust your doctor. Right, like, right. I'm sorry. But once again, trying to be kind to people and, and their lives are busy and distracted, but like, just because you're wearing a white butcher coat doesn't make you always the expert. It's not they they definitely know what they're doing. They went through medical school. Yeah, but there's bad doctors but there's too. Bad, right. But I'm just saying, look, get a second opinion. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> uh, we just got a second opinion, <laughs> allegedly. Uh, I don't know. Reggie. I think that's going to pick up. I don't Let's know. See. Okay, I think we're okay. Okay. But um, <laughs> yeah, should I trust my doctor? If you're asking whether you should trust your doctor, I'm I'm gonna say no. And and to you, sir. Do you want to hear a little brief story time? Yeah. Get, about are you gonna grab the stick of fury to sure, turn yeah. to activate? I think it's this guy. I'm pretty sure it's this guy. No, it's this one. It's this oh, guy. is that the? That's yeah, it's the, this guy. You're opposite. This, that's the summary. You're upside down. Yeah, it's this guy. And you only press it once. That's perfect. With no, 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 do not, sir. You get to close it with it, but no more. Okay. Okay, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, quite possibly the best couple hours of my life, um, years and years ago, whatever, six years ago, I was there was a bunch of us over at uh, some friend's house, and uh, a, a buddy goes, "Hey, man, do you want a muscle relaxer?" I'm like, okay, never had one of those before. So I took it with my Jack and Coke and with some Oxy that I had. One pill, one you know, one muscle relaxer, one Oxy, and one Jack and Coke. And he had motocross on the TV. I'm not a motocross fan. And I'm in the I like the it, it's like the couch swallowed me. It was it was <laughs> and I was sipping my Jack and Coke and I'm like, this is the best. This is the best I've ever felt in my entire life within an hour. I was like, I can never do this again because I could be get so addicted. <laughs> and I never had another muscle relaxer again. And, you know, I, I, I take a pain pill twice a year at this point, maybe, because my head hurts that bad. But it, that, or when it does, right? Yeah. But I usually just take Excedrin and fucking suck it up and deal with it. So, it's just funny that the muscle relaxer and Jack Daniels and an Oxy was the best four hours of my life. That is a beautiful story time. And ladies and gentlemen, that has, been, that has been our uh, coverage of uh, the medical field and why holistic stuff's not covered and why some shouldn't be that is, I guess, right? It was kind of a two-parter in, inside one. A twofer? A Two for Tuesday, bro. Close it out, sir. Uh, what see. does everybody else think? What do you guys, yeah. you know, what do you think about the medical profession? And, and tell the kids out there what to do. Uh, rate, download, subscribe, comment, and the YouTube, and the iTunes, and the Spotify, and the Podbean, and the doggy.com and stuff. And uh, what do you guys think about holistic medicine and alternative medicines? And... How do we improve as a human race? I think that was excellently said. Thank you, sir. And with that, I guess we'll call it another not conscious. It's um, Sunday, November Sunday, 29th, Sunday. 2020. Please listen, rate, review, subscribe, follow. We're so grateful for everything. We're, you know, it's going well, I think, in my opinion, from what we know. We're still pretty new at this, five months in. We are. But uh, this one, this one's probably going to be released towards either the end of December or early January. Still not sure. Okay. I don't like giving exact dates because I fucked up last time I said an exact date. So I'm moving one just to accommodate because I was an idiot.
which is which is fun. Whatever you say. So, so this has been one really smart guy over there. D- and one other guy over there. And dumb guy over here. Dumb guy over there. <laughs> and and how are we closing this one out? Uh, be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. <laughs> <laughs>